While we're all waiting for patch 21 maintenance to finally complete and the patch to go live, I thought let's have a look at the patch notes and see what exactly we have to look forward to if anything and what might potentially be broken. Um, let's get into it. Alrighty, so we're releasing update 21 today, which includes the Fortifying Atlas Community Challenge, the Meet Week seasonal event, and our new event, a colossal problem in the coming weeks. So straight up, that tells us a colossal problem. While it's in the patch, it will not be available to the player base just yet. The update also brings a number of additional improvement and bug fixes. Thank you. So let's go to the good stuff. Fortifying Atlas. Starting today, join the community in delivering construction supplies to Atlas. Brilliant. Uh, we can use that to unlock events and new cosmetic rewards for everyone. I haven't gone digging yet in any of the data mined information. I'm really hoping that these rewards, some of them are new. Again, I, like, I don't want recycled rewards, stuff that already existed that you could get from like the Christmas presents and stuff like that. I want something new to aim for. Otherwise, why are people going to do this event? 150 million steel, I think, um, is what we're at today. Um, in order to get people to do that, there needs to be a payout. Anyway, a colossal problem. In the coming weeks? All right, so that's coming in the coming weeks. Not now. It's in the patch. Not available. Meet week. Meet week will return on August the 8th, the 18th. All right, that's um, something else to look forward to, I guess. So the updates have already started rolling. I've already finished mine on PS4. Uh, PS4 is about 89 gigs. Uh, Xbox has a big one, 13.2, as with the on the PC, on the Microsoft Store, 12.5. So let's just look at what it says here for Fortifying Atlas real quick. Um, Two-part community-wide event. Blah, blah, blah. If the community delivers enough scrap of each type, so it's Steel this week, all players will earn in-game rewards, including new Brotherhood of Steel-themed cosmetics. That's the, the beret, I think. Um, a purveyor uh, super sale, a double score daily event, and more. Okay, brilliant. Um, I've already got a video on that if you want to check it out in the top right. A uh, colossal problem. Today's update brings a new public event, a colossal problem, to the game. However, we're still making some performance tweaks and doing additional testing before we enable the event. We're planning to make it available within the next couple of weeks. Brilliant. Meet Week returns. So that's the 18th to the 24th of August. And remember, if we complete one of those scrap challenges, one of them include a double Meet Week, meaning it might come back again. So yeah, that's that could be good depending on if you need legendary script or not. The problem is, um, I, I fill up fast. I guess I'm just gonna have to buy upgrade modules. Uh, Grey Money wants to provide top notch flair during his meat cook. Uh, each features a different difficulty so that low, mid and high level players can all participate. Yeah, it's the same as last year for the most part. I didn't participate in last year's event, but I did read up on it. There's been some design updates. Guys, this one is exciting. The ammo converter, right? Following community feedback. We've made several improvements to the ammo converter. Now, I just want you to think back, especially if you've seen my previous videos, the ones specifically where for the first time ever I got access to the ammo converter on uh, my Let's, Let's Play series of The Legendary Road or whatever it's called. Ooh, there it is, there it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. That's the thing I wanted to check today. It's the ammo converter. Here it is in all its glory. It's got this little computer screen thing here, and then it's got the machine, I guess you chuck in the ammo at the top, right? And it like breaks it apart into all its individual components and then scavenges what it can to put together other ammo types, right? Only that's not what I've read online. And I want to see it for myself. Turn that unused firepower into some ammo points. The and you get 2,000 max. So there's a virtual credit system. You trade ammo for credits, which you can then trade back against ammo. This makes no sense. The way I described it when I was viewing it, that's how it should be done if you ask me. But anyway, so I have some syringer 
ammo. I always have syringe or ammo. I get 10 points for that. So there you go, six out and I've got 10 out of 2000 max. Now is that 2000 max per day, per week? What's the deal with that or is that lifetime? Why do I have to click back in to sell another six? I, yeah, so it wasn't exactly very exciting. So here now we've added options to buy and sell 10 times and 100 times the normal amounts of ammo so that you can exchange larger stacks more quickly. Buying and selling has been incorporated directly into the terminal page for each ammo type, which means fewer screens. <laughs> I'm just thinking back to all those screens, man. This machine is stu- Who sat down and thought this would be a brilliant idea? I mean, we've updated the maximum amount of ammo points you can store from 2,000 to 100,000. Legendary loot. Daily quests and events have had their legendary loot rewards updated to include additional items like the fixer, secret service armor. Oh boy, we got to um we got to get those dailies done. As long as you've learned the plans for them. That's fantastic. I wonder how that will work, right? Secret service armor, are we talking like a regular everyday piece that's not legendary or are we talking the chance for a legendary piece of secret service armor to drop because if it's a legendary piece ranging from one to three stars this changes everything we we no longer have to get um upgrade modules from the purveyor and, and constantly roll that way um we can get it from the dailies wow everyone and their mother is going to be doing the dailies and i gotta stop using that that's interesting i can't wait to see how that plays out um i think as once this uh, once this patch launches and I get stuck into that event, get a feel for it, get a video up, I'm going hunting down dailies. Let's see what we can find. I do know three Secret Service armor plans. I have enough script finally. Once I log in and I get my additional 200, I'll have enough for the last two pieces I think that I'll need. Um, hmm. So quests and events. An ounce of prevention. We've simplified the collect blood samples, zero out of three, to only require a single blood sample from a feral ghoul. Um, yeah, that was kind of an adjustment because it, it, it could be buggy at times. Brilliant. Signal strength. I have a video up on signal strength and I get a lot of flack on that from people who find it extremely difficult. Um, so, signal strength. At the, the radio array, we've removed the wave of difficult robot enemies that spawn and reduced the overall difficulty of enemies in the area. Signal strength could be difficult for new characters due to high level enemies at the radio array. We've dropped the difficulty so that this part of the quest is easier to complete for lower level characters. Bravo. Um, that's exactly what you needed to do based on feedback I've seen in the comment sections of my video for this. So well done. So there's been a few bug fixes. Um, with today's update, though, they've found that the Forager ally is not currently providing daily quests to players who have the ally in their camp. So they broke the Forager ally. I couldn't care less. I, do you know what? If that's all you broke, brilliant. Art and animation. Uh, fix multiple animations affecting Screaming Eagle skin for handmade rifle. I don't think I have that. Uh, clean sweep photo mode pose. Don't care. Made adjustments to backpacks so they no longer appear to sink into the character's back while equipped. I've heard of this. I've never seen it. It hasn't affected me. But delighted it's been um, dealt with. Um, adjusted the front sight on the Appalachian Thunder Pipe skin for the Gatling gun. Okay. Adjusted the extra large magazine mod. In the Wasteland photo mode frame, Vault by Vault Boy... Now has a rifle over his shoulder instead of a laser musket. Interesting. Camps and workshops. The ammo converter now correctly disappears when destroyed in a workshop or camp until the player repairs it. The backwoods bungalow. That's, by the way, if you know my camp, I have different modules. The one that the bedroom's in, that's the backwoods bungalow. And players were able to just walk right in through the glass wall. Uh, but no more. No more. My, uh... My bungalow slash bedroom is now secure. When attempting to build a freestanding object, it will no longer flicker rapidly between two snap locations. The preview for the framed Captain Cosmos game board now correctly faces the player when attempting to build it. Sound effects no longer continue to play after it's destroyed. The Collectron station uh, will now correctly disappear after scrapping or storing it. 
There was an exploit fix that allowed players to stack multiple traps. There was another exploit fix that allowed players, um, I, I'm not sure actually, something to do related to scrapping Assaultron heads. <laughs> Sounds interesting. Fireplace secret door. No longer leaves behind visual effects when destroyed. I, I had I'd heard different things. I heard when people placed the fireplace secret door, it was quite obviously a secret door and didn't align properly with what it had been placed against. Against. I hope that's not the case. By the time, hopefully, I make my way around, I really want to get that fireplace secret door. And I really hope that it works by the time I get there. Foundations. Fix an issue where foundation pieces could be built in invalid circumstances. Ah, oh, crap. You got to take the fun out of it. I don't even know what the circumstances are, but I know that there's been some amazing YouTubers doing some amazing builds because they're able to. Because of issues like this, shall we say. Lights. Objects with lights will now correctly light up immediately after being repaired. Uh, the rustic water mill. The generator version of the rustic water mill will now correctly require the player to know the medium generator recipe before it can be built. Ah. Fix an issue that caused crafting to use junk items from the player's inventory and stash before using their available scrap. Crafting, building and repairing now utilize the player's scrap and junk in the following order of priority. Scrap in the player's inventory, then scrap in the player's stash, then scrap in the Fallout first scrap box, then junk in the inventory will be auto-scrapped, and then junk in the stash will be auto-scrapped. Uh, it's a nice priority list. If it works, brilliant. Walls. Fixed an issue where doorway walls could be hard to place under roofs and upper floors. I've come across this. Fixed an issue where slanted walls could not be snapped to roofs. I've come across this. Fixed an issue that would allow walls, that could allow walls to be snapped to overhanging roofs and upper floors, which could be used to create floating walls. What's wrong with that? I've done that. Implemented an additional fix to address remaining edge cases where daily and weekly challenges could complete themselves automatically. We shall see if this holds. So of course, they're referring to, I believe, the score challenges where someone would log in and some or sometimes all of the challenges had auto completed, but there was no score out of it. So you're like, crap, for today and as many days as you were plagued with this, you were not getting score. Nuclear winter, nobody cares. Combat, exploit. <laughs> okay, wow, exploits. Fixed an issue resulting from reviving another player under certain circumstances. Was that god mode? I don't know. Uh, fixed an exploit allowing bows to fire much faster than intended. All right. Enemies. The Wendigo Colossus. Opening the Pip-Boy just before being feared by the Wendigo Colossus no longer causes the controls to temporarily lock up. <laughs> I thought that was <laughs> I thought that was a feature. I thought that was a part of the whole feared... Um, <laughs> whatever backpacks fixed an issue that prevented players from scrapping newly crafted backpacks hmm. bows the blood eagle bow skin can now also be applied to compound bows nice the chinese stealth suit the helmet for the chinese stealth suit no longer incorrectly state that it protects against waterborne diseases oh it could we not have just corrected it so it did protect against them would that not have made i don't know energy weapons Addressed an issue that could prevent energy weapons like the Tesla rifle or flamer from damaging enemies under certain circumstances. I wonder what those circumstances were. Jetpacks. Fixed an issue allowing Atomic Shop Power Armor Jetpack skin to be applied by players who did not own it. That just seems mean. Jetpacks. The Captain Cosmos jetpack now correctly appears in the list of mods for the T-65 Power Armor. If I ever get it. Lunchboxes. Using more than four lunchboxes now correctly refreshes the duration of the 100% XP buff. Power armor. The T65 power armor headlamp no longer shines in the wrong direction. <laughs> what? <laughs> Did it do that? Oh, that is brilliant. <laughs> oh, man. I love it. I love this game. Um, secret service. <laughs> How does that happen? Secret service armor. Added plans to craft pocketed and deep pocketed mods for several, or for several, I'm still laughing, I'm sorry. For secret service armor limbs. They can be purchased for 250 and 500 gold respectively. Nice. 
Um, I just seen a post on Reddit the other day where uh, people were complaining about the fact of the the limited mods available for Secret Service Power Armor and Deep Pocketed in particular was highlighted. So I'm happy because that can only tell us there's probably more in the pipeline. Mods fixed an issue where the bow, assault rifle and brotherhood recon rifle did not have the default appearance equipped on pickup. And vault tech supply packages now correctly have a weight of 0 0.1 pounds. Oh no! I thought that was done intentionally. So currently their weight, right? That's what you get from the game board. It contains lead steel, all of that jazz. And they weigh zero. And I thought that was intentional. I did think that was intentional. I thought, oh, this is handy. So I can just keep this, put all the rest in my Fallout First box. But anyway, it doesn't matter. They're going into Fallout First anyway. I guess this is really only an issue for someone who doesn't have First. In which case, I'm so sorry, guys. That 0 0.1 pounds is still not much, but come on. Why could we not have left it at zero? It's not like you get that many. Mutations scares me. So herbivore and carnivore fixed a number of food benefits that were not being doubled correctly. Okay, now I'm fine with that. So long as you haven't touched what is been doubled correctly. And what I mean by that is if I jump back on, I'm just checking if the server's up, it's not. When it's up, if I jump back on and I have myself some tasty squirrel stew, I expect 20% XP bonus. I expect double the 10 because I'm a carnivore. I don't want you breaking that. And it's the same for the herbivore with the cranberry reddish, I think it is. Don't break that. Please don't break that. Please don't be broken. Doubling more things? Brilliant. Please don't then break. You get me. NPCs. Fixed rare case where NPCs could pick up items a player had dropped in a loot bag. Was that a thing? Pathing. Um, fixed pathing issues affecting multiple NPCs and foundation. Cool. Scavenger traders will no longer be repeatedly downed due to radiation damage when near an active nuke zone. Smiley now resets correctly every Monday, allowing players to purchase gold from him every week. If you're inside the wayward when Smiley resets, you must exit and re-enter. Oh, good. We should get some gold to compensate. I'm sure I've gone in there a few times after being away from the game for a few weeks. And he had no gold for me. Ward. We've instructed Ward to stay put in his trailer so you should no longer spot him roaming Foundation. He should be able to roam Foundation. Why have we... Whatever. Performance and stability. Fix an issue that could cause client performance issues when attempting to stack many camped objects in a small space. Attempting to replace a fence in modify mode no longer sometimes crashes the game client. Addressed an issue that could result in server crash when loading... Oh, whatever. Um, loading a workshop. Loads of stuff that have been fixed for crashes. And there's some nuclear winter nonsense there. Perks. Adrenaline now applies its damage bonus correctly after enemy kills. I have not been using adrenaline for this specific reason. I think I'll be swapping out and putting it on now again. Excellent. Robotics expert no longer prevents players from trading with vendor bots. Was that a thing? Quests and events. Uh, crash landing, logging out and back in after retrieving the flight recorder data no longer prevents the quest from progressing. Didn't know that was a thing. Thicker than water. Logging out during Beckett's final quest no longer creates a duplicate with Toga underground key. Is that a big issue? Okay. Uh, heart of the enemy, daily. Can no longer be repeated immediately after completion. Didn't know it could. Strange bedfellows. The complete signal strength objective description is no longer cut off in the pip boy. Vital equipment. Fixed an issue that could prevent vital equipment from progressing if the player killed the raider thief before talking to Ward. We're nearly done, guys. We're nearly done. Um, if you stayed with me this long, thanks. It's a pleasure reading this to you live from Professor's website. User interface. Loading screens. The score meter and rank up reward fanfares no longer remain visible during loading screens. Was that a bad thing? Localization. The legendary run game board rules sheet is now correctly translated. Brilliant. On PC, pressing tab after opening the main menu from the map now correctly returns the player to the map view. Okay. Pressing play before the main menu finishes loading no longer places the player directly into adventure mode or displays a fail to find your selected character error message. Fixed an issue causing workshop icons on the map to display normal location icons 
and have incorrect functionality when selected. I've noticed that. Okay, good. Players will no longer be spammed by dehydration notifications after becoming dehydrated while viewing the legendary run for game. Oh, that's another fantastic nugget right there. I want a list of these from Bethesda prior to them fixing them so I can give me a week's head up so I, I know that they're there and I can create videos on them. That would be so much fun. Um, hmm. The collections tab in the pip boy now correctly displays the players' um, caps, gold, tadpole badges, etc. Good, because mine all zeroed out. Social fixed an issue that could cause the friends list to appear blank after removing a friend. Teams addressed an issue causing teams to automatically disband after a nuclear winter match. The legendary run. Selecting rank 100 on the game board now correctly displays preview images for all of the rewards. Oh, that is something I noticed. That's good. And then world. Cranberry bog. Fix the location near the ranger district office where the player could sink below the terrain. Haven't experienced it? Brilliant. Nuclear silos. Fix the location in the reactor room where players could get out of the world and skip. Oh, wow. That's been around forever. I've never done it, but I've heard of people doing it. Um, yeah, you can kind of jump up above the map, run along, jump back down and go launch your nuke sort of thing. Okay. Doesn't affect me as I've no longer done it, but wow, that's like, that's been around forever to the point that it's, it's become part of, I'd imagine, a lot of um, nuclear silo walkthrough videos. Anyway, fixed multiple locations in the world where players could become stuck in or near clutter and other objects. Yeah. Yep. And then I have to fast travel out and back. Yeah, that's that's me nearly every other day. So that's it. That's pretty much what I wanted to do. Just to quickly run down the uh, the patch list so I know what's coming and so I get to create a video. So if you guys have any interest while you're waiting, you know what's coming. But more importantly, in this format, to get an idea as to what you think about some of these changes. I think some are comical that I didn't know existed to begin with. Others I'm nervous about, like the uh, carnivore and herbivore. Like, please don't break it. Please, yeah, fix it. Just don't break it. Please test it first. This is very important. Um... And yeah, so I'm excited for now. I know by the end of today I won't be because the event will already be boring me because all the event really is is bring stuff to a scrap box and drop it in. Great. Um, Meat Week isn't here yet. So we don't have that to look forward to. Wendigo Colossus isn't here yet. Um, so there's a bunch of patches. There's a reason for us to do dailies now, potentially. So I guess that's where my excitement is, primarily on the new event, but as soon as that gets old and stale, which it's going to extremely quickly, I think, um, it'd be nice to have a reason to run those dailies again, if for no other reason than to see if I can get some ser secret servers to drop, and if so, what exactly is dropping? Um, so I'll leave it there for now. Guys, what do you think? Please do let me know in the comments what you like, what you don't like, what you're cursing at right now because you did not want that change to occur. Let me know in the comments below. As always, thanks for tuning in and until next time, take it easy, all the best.